John Spacey, he was a good friend of mine. You know, he he was Mr. Cool, man. And uh, and to accept me as a as a as a you know as a little kid and not being a pain in the ass, which I probably was because I still am. Uh, you know, he was always super nice to me. Uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, heroin back back then and still today. You know, that's legendary status right there. They don't paint you on the side of a building. There's definitely pictures of that. Now that the whole building's torn down. No, unbelievable. I think I'm. Look at that. See, this is this is what's cool about Ka uh, about Karen. She she put everything in the net. You know, New York hardcore. You know, New York City is hardcore, and it's 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 not just a sound of music. It's a way of life, and you know, this is a, this is a hardcore way of life too. Hip hop is part of the family. Is this Terry? She was there in San Francisco. I, I was playing the Mabuhay Gardens in the Tenderloin in San Francisco, '83, somewhere around there, and this guy got his throat cut. Yeah, right there, right on the sink. She saved his life because she was a paramedic or a nurse. Her and her sister. There were three of them. There were three bald-headed girls. Terry, her sister, and another girl. I don't think the other girl was a sister. But I forgot the, their names also. I only remember Terry because she, I was friends with her. And she was she dated Billy, so Billy was my friend, Billy Psycho. So, so I, uh, I was out with Billy one night. And we were tripping. We were drunk. We were out there. And we were sharing a 40. And we, we were drinking. And we were passing the bottle and drinking. Billy drank and his tooth fell in the, in the bottle of beer. We were like, oh shit, your tooth's in there. So how are we going to get, let's drink, don't throw the beer away, God forbid. Let's drink the beer. Don't swallow the tooth. And then we'll, you know, we'll get the tooth out. So we drank the beer, we drank the beer, and we waited five minutes, and the tooth got stuck to the side of the bottle. And we couldn't get the tooth out, and it got stuck to the side of the bottle. It says, hey, fuck it. Boom, we threw the fucking, the bottle, we broke on the floor, we scrambled through all the glass, we got the tooth, I put it in my, you know, where you keep the picks, my guitar picks in my pocket. I said, come on, go to my house. I crazy glued his tooth back in his head. But when I did, it was backwards. It, was, it looked like that. So I had to take it out, re-glue it, and stick it back up his head. Wow, there's a picture of uh, the agnostic from Banner. Like one of my first Banners. We were going to play CBGB's that day. So CBGB's is about three blocks from here. I'm playing, and I uh, I said, wow, we need a Banner behind us. So I took the... This, this was the shade to my window. So I took the shade from my window and I put black duct tape on it and I hung it at CBGB's. And that was like my, one of my first banners that I, we had. Ah, I can't even look at pause. <sighs> I can't look at pause. <laughs> that wound is still uh, not healed. That is Steve Poss, is it? That's Steve Poss. Steve Poss. Look at how little he was. I loved him. My mother loved him. Forget about it. She's the little Jewish boy she always wanted. Because he used to stay in my house when they used to go on tour. You know? And uh, my mother loved him. He was a good guy. Uh, the last time I seen him was 10, 10, 20. I visited him in uh, Calvary. And he was going to die. He was... You know, and I hugged him, and I told him I loved him, and uh, he was like, get me out of here. I didn't say goodbye to him. I says, all right, I'm going to get Paulie. I'm going to get you the fuck out of here right now. And that's how I left him. I didn't want to say goodbye. Next day I woke up, I got the phone call. Uh, Johnny Waste, great guitar player, great guy, played on his... One of his singles recently on the record did a great job on that, I, I think. Johnny Waste, the voice, and, oh, this is me and Steve Potts. <laughs> Dearly beloved, passed on recently, Steve Potts. That's me sitting in the corner. This is, this is uh, CBGB's uh, dressing room. You can tell by the graffiti. That's Johnny Waste over here from Urban Waste, still. CBGB's. 
bags. Probably right after biting off Hilly Crystal's son's finger. You know that story? Yeah, that's a legendary one. That's true. <laughs> this girl's like, what the fuck is this dude doing? P.D. Hines, Carl Marsher, Tide Youth. Okay, look. This is the old CBGB's banner. Because I spray painted Agnostic Front on it. This has to be like 80, the, the original banner. Because some band came, I, I forget who, and they robbed the, the awning of CBGB's. So when you see with Agnostic Front is the original awning. <laughs> I know, is that, that's James Contra. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who's now like a Russian uh, millionaire or something. I haven't seen, seen him in a while, but he was, yeah. Wow, Charlie, Ray, little Chris, Kabula, Vinny, unbelievable. Somebody needs their shirts. What the? What is that? Is that duct tape? <laughs> God. The classic Tommy Rat. I know Tommy from Max's Kansas City. That's when I first met Tommy. Is that Frenchie? No. Yeah. That is Frenchie. I love Frenchie. I talk about him all the time. Nobody knows where he is buried or whatever. I had police people, you know, uh, graveyard people, you know, like people that are involved in mortuary type things. My friend Johnny, he's a he's a guy in Staten Island. Picks up the, he's a last responder. Mm. Let's not forget our last responders. I never heard of them. Those. The undertakers, the people who pick up the dead bodies. Mm. And those are the way, those are, that's really, you know, you hear the first responders like, yeah, you know, like, yeah, I hear you. But let's not forget the last responders, too. That's a grim task, man. <laughs> yeah. I bet you Willie gave him the black eye. As a matter of fact, he's, he's right here on my cigar box. I got a cigar box and something like that. I got Willie's picture on there. Yeah, Willie, good guy, Willie. Willie No Edge. We loved him. People had the X. We had an X with a circle. Like, yeah, fuck you. Nah, Willie was great. Willie was, you know, Willie had a perpetual cigarette in his mouth. He danced with, he was the only guy in the pit that could dance with a cigarette. I, I don't know, I probably, you probably got some pictures of him dancing with the cigarette. He was just a great guy. He was super nice. And, you know, like, I wasn't a big big kid and uh and he you know he was like a big brother nobody not for nothing I never noticed it but you know nobody ever messed with me when I was with him <laughs> I wonder why and uh I remember he had a like a crazy hot rod van and uh Billy Billy Milano had one too no Billy Milano had a car he had a, he had a hot rod van and drive it down Avenue A like uh brah, like and uh being terrified in it because <laughs> we were obviously under the, under the influence of all kinds of shit. And Billy Milano had a car too. I remember being in his car and it was like a race car and it didn't have any seats except for his seat. And I remember sitting in the car and the car did like a wheelie. And all I remember is falling back and seeing street lights and knowing the car was up and bam. And that's when you, you know, we could burn garbage in the street and that stay warm and the fire department never came. Jenny Lush and Vic love. Punk rock love. Was this uh, Central Park? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You get the sad moments of faces. Uh, John <laughs> Johnny Stiff sighting. Where's Waldo? Where's Stiff? Richie. Wow. There's Dave, of course, Dave. This is a great picture right here. Young and they're useless. They used to cover a Bad Brains songs. They used to do Play to Come, and I loved how they did the best version, better than the, the Bad Brains. You know how they used to do it? Hey! Da, da, da. They used to do that. It was so great. Hey, look at Frenchie. Look at that stupid tattoo. Wow, I love it. Hey, look at that Psycho shirt, an original Psycho. That's Billy Psycho. Mm -hmm. I can tell by the tattoo. Don't look like in the face. I just seen him on the, the thing with Drew, and uh, boy, he got old. <laughs> yeah, everybody did. I know. I, I see friends, and you know. 
Like, wow. Well, at least you made it, you know? He used to put, wear a wig and go on the, on the street when we used to bum change and he'd be like, I bet you a dollar that I could pull my hair, all my hair out of my head right now. And people give him a dollar, like, ah! You know, and then Frenchie would mosh into buses. We used to sit on uh, St. Mark's Place where, um, what's the fucking, uh, the holiday? The holiday uh, bar is. And uh, Frenchie, the buses used to go by and he would run, bounce off the bus, scare the shit out of the poor bus drivers. You know, we weren't the smartest kids in the world, but we had fun. Oh, the Beastie Boys. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Beastie Boys, they were like uh, one of the bands we played with. And uh, they started out as the young and... Well, they, they, there was two bands, the Beastie Boys and the Young and the Useless. I think they were like mixed together. Uh, David Stelkin was a singer. He died. Um, and the Beastie Boys, uh, this is when they were doing the Pollywog Stew stuff. When they were, uh, you know, playing at the Pyramid and A7. And we used to play these little, like, nondescript clubs, like, just basements. You know, people come in and wave a gun in your face. Like, what the hell's going on here? And, uh, funny thing, when they came out of the License to Ill Tour, when they went over into the, the Bebop, th the B-Boy thing, um, they invited us to go on tour with them. We toured all over the U.S. with the Beastie Boys. We opened up with Fishbone, Public Enemy, and uh, Run DMC made a few appearances. And they were just sort of like, you know, a thing of the past. I saw their thing the other day. I had to correct some of the things they were saying. They weren't the ones who got in all the trouble and had to leave town. That was Murphy's Law. We got They put us on tour so we would get in trouble and they could skate out. But we used to turn it around on them. There's David Skilkin right there. Uh, who else was and is it, was that Run DMC? Run yeah. DMC, yeah. These guys jumped off, stage dived off. Uh, uh, when we played in, uh, in L.A., they stage, they came running across the stage and stage dived off. And Run lost his, his Adidas is in the crowd. And he came, I want my shoes back. Who got my shoes? And people threw the shoes at him. <laughs> Beastie Boys, boy, holy shit. They had their, they were fucking funny, dude. They had their own, their own bit. And to go figure that they would take me on one of the greatest journeys I've ever went in my life on that tour. I can't thank them enough for that. <laughs> Unbelievable. Nicest guy in the world and he's not here. You know, he didn't even do drugs. You know? They would kid around about it, but he wasn't doing it like we were. Cameron got such great pictures, man. Like... You know, p people take pictures and they're, they're, the people are posing for the pictures. This is her hanging out and going, sneaky, like, because she was always so meek, you know? Yeah. You never noticed she was there. So always quiet and cute and, and sweet. Ah, this is, um, young, that's Young and Useless. Yeah. I'm on the seven inch. All we do is hang around because we are young and useless. Hang around, hang around, do our, do our. <laughs> And then we sang, I sang, rise and, rise and shine and give God your glory, glory. Rise, shine. Then we recorded that at, um, at Jerry Williams' brother's studio with Jerry Williams. Howie Pyro. Stefan, he still looks the same. Look at that Ampeg flip top. That, yeah, look beer, at the everyone. fucking Ludwig Dream. How much all that shit's worth right now? That's a B-15 flip. That, fl that amp flips upside down and goes inside the case. Last time I saw him, we were running away from a show that was putting us on too late, and I was like, fuck this, we're not playing in San Francisco. And he's like, get in my camper. And we're in San Francisco going up and down in this camper. And shit, holy shit, all this junk is jumping around the camper. We're like, Rrr. like, was it the streets of San Francisco? Blue, well, they, they found him dead with his pockets cut under, under a park bench in Tompkins Square Park. Her, dope again. This guy, everybody knows already. Is that, uh, what's it, Howie? Mm hmm And that's Stefan? Mm-hmm. Right? Stefan's a, a, a sports guy. He likes sports. You look at him, you're not supposed to like sports. Yeah. Get out of here. Don't say that to people. You know? He's a good guy. Stefan, that's false spot prophets, right? False prophets. The guitar player is a good guy. We got Blue. He passed away. He passed away while we were on tour, Blue. I have his name tattooed. Where is it? Oh, it's on this arm. 
he got it, that was eighty six. I got you could never see it, so don't even bother, you know. And uh, he passed away in eighty six. I was on tour with GBH, and uh, Kabula left the tour to to go to the funeral. And here I am with my dog, my pit bull bear. Bear. He yeah. told me it was Sarge. Oh, that, that that was my other dog, Sarge. But this one's Bear. Oh, shit. I cried. Well, I called him Sarge. I called him Bear, you know. Sergeant Bear. There you go. Wow, well, look how young I was. Vinny Stigma. Oh, me and Vinny go back way back. We used to, like, uh, back in these days, I used to go over his house, and we, we used to have this girlfriend, Gina. I had this girlfriend, Ann. And we used to go swimming in the local pool over here, you know? It was a lot of fun. Before there was Agnostic Front, he was in the Eliminators. Before Harley was in the Chromags, he was in this, the Stimulators. And before I was in Murphy's Law, I was in the Attack. And we used to play A7. And what we used to do is, you know, they would, people would say, oh, you know, come down and see us in uh, D.C., you know, come down and play a show. I went down there to play. I went with a... I uh, went down to the Undead, and Minor Threat was there, and Bad Brains was there, and we were seeing all these bands, like, holy shit, these guys are great. Like, uh, And, like, I think we all got in our heads, like, you know, fuck this punk rock thing, let's do some hardcore music, let's go a little further with this, you know? So Vinny came up, dropped the Eliminators, and put together Agnostic Front. He put it with uh, John Watson as his singer, uh, Diego on the bass, and uh, who else is in the band? And Vinny on guitar, you know, and it was it was a lot of noise, but people really liked it. Like, yeah, got the fruit. And uh, I saw their first show at Two Plus Two, it was Second Street. And, uh, Dave, who owned A Seven, opened up a bigger club called a uh, Second and Second, called the Two Plus Two. The building collapsed, but we, after that, but uh, and Ignacio Prime played the first show and opened. They opened for Social Distortion. And what happened is that, like, uh, for some reason or other, Mike Ness picked up a bottle and threw it into the crowd and hit Vinny Stigma in the knee. He was like, ah, like that. We all were like, ah, get that guy. And we chased uh, Mike Ness into traffic all the way up 2nd Avenue. And he bounced off a cab that was, you know, he got hit by a cab. We all go running over, like, punching him and kicking him. Everybody just took turns on him, you know. He ended up running into his van and locking himself in. Oh, that's when you could jump off the, that's uh, Irving Plaza, when you could jump off the PA. <laughs> I talk, I talk like I'm proud, pr like the dumbest thing in the world to do. Shut up, Rocco. I don't even know, up oh, there's John. There's Paul, she a terror. Are you sure? Yeah, that's Paulie. That's definitely Paulie. Becky Bondage. Is that Becky? It looks like... I went on tour, on the Social Chaos tour, and got, you know, as a kid, you know, the first music that we got turned on to before California was English punk. And uh, it, it was always like, ooh, Becky Bondage. So to play with her, she, I guess, loved the band, and she would always stand on the side of the stage, and, and all the guys would be, and I'd walk, when I'd walk on the stage, I'd be, hi, Becky. It's still, you know, I still feel like you're tw like a little kid. She's such a nice woman, and, and such a great singer. So she's still great, it's still beautiful. Becky Bond is Vinnie Stigma, like Bonnie and Clyde. I love her, she's great. Good girl, good friend, great man. She was on a tour with, all, with this gigantic tour. She was the only female or girl, whatever, you know, I don't know what you're supposed to say today. Well, anyway, she's awesome. She's a hero to any little girl out there. Oh boy, tour van. Man, shit like that is what spoils me and makes me love Ho Holiday Inn all that much more. Living in a van, no fun. Kids today, they don't know. They, they, they get their air-conditioned vans with their tinted windows or fly into shows now and shit and, and a supplied back line. <laughs> I'm, don't, don't, I'm not knocking it, but you know, until you woke up in that in the summer, Wow. And you know, when you look at pictures of shows now, kids ain't fucking sweating like that anymore. Either, either air conditioning has got better at clubs or, or the shows were a lot hotter. 
Oh, when you come home sweaty and smell like cigarettes and shit. Uh. Yeah. Well, I liked uh, when we did uh, the Prudential Center with uh, with the Misfits and Suicidal. That um, that Glenn made it where they couldn't use the cam. You could no one could use cameras, and they had to put them in like these these burlap sacks with with, with this like this this special key, and people were literally like trying to bite through the things, and freaking out. But there's a good one of me, Glenn. I was I was under the under the speaker doing in front of the whole arena doing a bump. And, and they're like, here he comes, here he comes. I'm like, Glenn's coming walking to me. And there's a picture of Glenn, bends down to sing with me. And I'm just like, fanboy, like, ah! <laughs> it was great, dude. It's an amazing picture. <laughs> hey, Jimmy Drasher. Jimmy J. <laughs> that ain't CBGB's, or maybe, because they never had two balls of CBGB's. <laughs> they probably, they had a ball or two every now and again. You catch a ball out there. That's Lewis. Lewis. He's in Atlanta, Georgia. That's Miles. These are the frontline type guys. Jimmy Gestapo. Oh, you see this jacket? Do you did you get one of those jackets? We found a whole bunch of these gas station jackets one night. You know, like someone was throwing them out, and it was like, mine said Fred Yowney. <laughs> it's like I'm walking through Grand Central, and the Harry Christians, hey, Fred, Fred, come here, I want to talk Fred. <laughs> this is great. This, these jackets, I was going to tell the story before, and here's the jacket right in front of my face. I was with uh, Davey, remember Dave, talk like that, Crazy Dave? Davey, he talked like, what? I don't know if it was an English accent or what, but me and him, I don't know what we were driving in, but we were in Tribeca or something, and there were these bo big boxes, and it was boxes of just jackets, like hardcore jackets, <laughs> you know, what would, would now be a hardcore jacket. And we came, showed up to A7, it was like Christmas for everybody. Everyone had a jacket. And I remember Frenchie Drew, you know, which I guess a lot of people don't know, uh, you know, he was an amazing artist. He, he drew with a red pen the circle jerk skanker, like perfect on the back of my jacket. That's D and the DJ Buta and A7. Who is that? that Lu is that Louie? I see glasses. They don't know how to, it could be Stigma because Stigma doesn't know how to spell my name still. It is, it's gotta be Vinny Stigma. Cause Vinny, this is, the, see, uh, detect, New York Hardcore Detective, James Drescher. That's the way Vinny would always spell my name. Vinny's the only one that spelled my name like that. And Vinny can't spell, so there you go. And was he, this so great on the toilet seat. Some people would be offended, I'm proud of it. Look at that, on the, on the toilet seat. Never mind, who's brave enough to go that close to the toilet seat in the CBGBs? Ah, oh, Freddy, look at baby Freddy. Like, if, today, if kids were like this on the street, they'd be like fucking, there'd be a task force to rescue us. Steve Poss, Ray Bees, Johnny Waste. Looking wasted in the back. That looks like the old Murphy's Law van, too. I, I know by the paneling. That was the gold Dodge van we had. Wow, that's before I could drive. Oh, boy. <laughs> this, this picture, huh? Gee, what has he got, a bag of candy? Look at that. Two kids in a bag of candy having a good time. It's actually glue. A bag of glue. And we'd, we'd have to go to 14th Street. 14th Street and 3rd Avenue. That was the only place that had the good glue. There was an old candy store on the corner. And then we discovered that we could get white out at Ray's across the street and it was even better. The fact that we, you know, the fact that guys put out books and records and, and toured the world after doing so many drugs and, you know, you're destroying your brain cells. The people that always say that, what did, what did they ever do? You know, imagine if we didn't destroy our brain cells, what we could have done. Lazar, Sandy just passed away too. The back of Billy Psycho's head. I know this because I was with him when he when he got this on the back of his head at Vinny Stigma's Kitchen by Elio. And when Elio started, you know, tattoos for you people that don't have tattoos, the meaty part is always good. Your skull is just skin and bone. He and he started drilling his head, and teardrops were shooting out of his eyes like like bullets. 
It was like, pew, pew, pew. I don't even think he meant to, 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 to cry like that, but it was like, his eyes are just watering like crazy. Lazar, another one gone. Daryl. Is that Mackie, little baby Mackie? Mm -hmm. Wow, Harley. That's Irving Plaza. That's when Irving Plaza was still like a Polish hall. It had the upstairs where you could, like the dressing rooms upstairs. I remember uh, being doing a, hey pug. We're doing a, we were, when the band was starting to do good. And I remember smoking a joint with Captain Sensible and uh, Joe Strummer. And it, it, I'm still like, wow. I remember just being like, this is amazing. You know when you're like trying to be cool and you're a kid and but it, I'm still excited about it. I was like, I was like, man, uh, fucking this is amazing. I've had a lot of those moments though and they usually involves me having a joint in my hand. It was like, it reminds me of the story with Todd Youth when we went and first in the bus and I, I'd pull, and I snuck a joint under my shoe and we were in the tour bus and we were, the bus, we were finally in the back of the bus and I'm like, I like to join up and I'm like, I'm like, we made it. This is it, baby. This is it. You know, it was like, wow. And you know, and then, then when your heroes become your friends, you made it. There's the nicest guy in the world. I think that's Doyle. And then, and then fucking Glenn. Misunderstood. People talk shit, but he talk, talk all the shit you want, but. Are you in at like 60, making a million dollars a show, dressing like a monster, stomping around with your friends? I don't think so. The show we played with him was fucking amazing. And Glenn asked, Glenn was the one that asked us to go. And we, I was in the back and uh, some of the black and blue guys were doing security for, for him and uh, he called, they were like, Jimmy, Glenn wants to talk to you. And I'm like, woo. <laughs> Door opens up and he, and he sounded like shit. I'm like, dude, you all right? And you know, you know you never, Glenn's got an amazing voice. And I'm like, what's the matter, Glenn? What's the matter? He's like, oh, I'm like, I'm like, I just want to thank you for doing it. He was a super nice guy. Did the show, everything, great. Little did, did everybody know, but his mother died that, that day. And he still got on stage and played, you know. Paul Dordown joined the Army, became an Army uh, uh, pastor, and, and uh, published books and everything on, of all things, religion and stuff. <laughs> Outspoken... Uh, you know, uh, so, for soldiers, uh, soldiers' rights and stuff too. Doyle, man, Doyle, nicest guy, scariest looking guy in the world, but the nicest guy ever. Jerry only too. People have their opinions, but you know, when we played with them in uh, at the Prudential Center, uh, we had toured with them before. That's when Michael Graves was singing, and uh, and I had my dog Petey with me, my, my rat terrier, and he was way well, way behaved, better behaved than the Chihuahua, and. Uh, and and right, he's on, you know, he's on stage doing sound check and stuff, and, and I'm walking in, I'm like, wow, wow, wow. And he stops everything, he goes, hey, Jimmy. He goes, how's Petey, is he still around? He remembered the dog and everything. He's, you know, it's just like, wow. And there's, there's that jerk yelling at me right now. Jerry, good guy. Got me that big show with the Misfits. I just, pl I played that show right here, this one. This is, uh, what a show, man. It was really a great show. I, I can't tell you how many times Jerry called me and said, Vinny, I'm going to get you that show. So, um, you know, I'm like, yeah, Jerry, don't worry about it. Because I know everybody was asking. I said, you do what you got to do. Don't worry about me. We'll, I'll get you next time. You got me the fucking show. I don't know who this guy is. That's uh, Dave Vaney from the from the. Ah, ah, I was on tour with him. And, you know, he's like, yeah, okay. He presses his socks, you know. He's like, don't talk to nobody. Like, oh, excuse me. I see you 30 days in a row, you want to say hello? You know, where's the bathrooms? Where's catering? You know, where's my dressing room? You know, well, like I, didn't I see you like 20 times yesterday? Hello, how are you? You don't have to have a conversation. I gave it, his wife gave birth, I gave him a nice gift, you know, like a, a like a, a baby lamp, or like a nice gift. His wife was nice. She, a baby lamb? A, a, like a lamp. Oh. Like it's something for the baby. And uh, his wife was cool. She played in... M Ms. M M Sisters of Mercy, I believe. This is like, uh, this is the Black Flag, dude. Chuck Biscuits, dude. Woo, woo. Yeah, the whole band, dude. Chuck Dukowski on the fucking bass. <sighs> that's Black Flag. I don't, yeah, everybody could have their opinion, but that's my opinion. Well, and then it was other singers that were way better too. But whatever. More power to Henry. There it is. 
I gotta be, I'm always in the crease. It's great though. What a fucking moment. Thanks, I'm, I, can't, I can't be thankful enough to kind of forget in this insane moment. Yeah, plenty of people could, could talk about their stories, but there's my, I don't even have to say anything. There it is. That is, that's, that's fucking, that's one of the, the super lineups. Chuck Biscuits is like, the, you know, one of my favorite drummers. And once again, I'm looking at the equipment. See, I mean, California guys, they had it going on, dude. They, they knew, you know, look at the equipment they were playing on. We, we were playing on like, but, you know, we were playing on whatever we could get. But I remember there would be in a pizza box we take from the pizzeria next door and put it and tape it to the kick drum in A7 all the time instead of getting a kick drum. Instead of everyone chipping in and getting a new skin, we kept fucking sticking um, stuff on. There's, there he is, the man, Jesse Malin, one of my very best friends and the, one of the nicest guys and most supportive guys on, on our scene. Looks out for everybody and employs all of his friends and everything, you know. Coney Island High, all the shit he's done for everybody. I don't, I think he, should, he should have his own book too. I hope he does it one day. There's the guy that fucking cursed me with Jimmy Gestapo name. Yeah, you gotta have a, you gotta have a name like Sid Vicious, Johnny Rotten. And as I wind up with Gestapo, great. You know, we all make bad decisions when we're kids, but some of those bad decisions stay with you until you're in your 50s. Look at Michelle. This is so Michelle right here. It's so Michelle. Robbie, he played the uh, uh, drums for Agnostic Front for a minute. Is that Tony Dust in the background, maybe? Looks like Ray. Mm, no, nah, I don't think so. The head's too round. Uh, this girl, what's her name? I need a lifeline, but I know her too. Yeah, Michelle. Wow, Michelle was cool. Robbie, here's the dead regular youth. Me and Jimmy got him their first show. Really, Jimmy, because he's a Queens guy, you know. You had to take Queens. I am a Queens. All right. Too bad, Dave. Uh, the Bad Brains Roadie, which is Alvin. Alvin. That guy right here. Mm -hmm. Alvin. There's Jimmy, Tommy Rat. John Narquist. You know the story of John Narquist? He was like, uh, he was just like one of the guys who used to hang out. He had big curly red hair, and then he just shaved it all off and like one of the first skinheads down here in the crew. And the story is that like he was in Jersey one night and he got run over by a train. And somebody said that like, you know, somebody beat him up and threw him on the tracks, like some gang or something like that, and the train ran him over. No one ever found out. Unsolved murder. One of our first friends to lose their life in the scene. Well, it was our first friend to lose his life in the scene. That was uh, John Norquist. Got murdered in New Jersey for looking different. Got beat to death and thrown on train tracks. We all went to his funeral. His parents buried him in an urban waist shirt. Sad. Yep, David Skilkin, another one. Well, a guy would always tell me to be careful and, and, and take it easy, and, and, and then what does he do, you know? More heroin, you know? That's D Dave. Dave's a great guy. I think he's still kicking, Dave. Big Rob, my bro, went to school, junior high school with him, 141. He's doing good. Claudette and Leon. Leon was so great. Leon, Leon was the, did the best HR imitation ever. He was the best. Such a nice guy and such a sad story. There, there we are, skin ass. The first crew on the scene, skin ass. Wow. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's how I know my, that's my, that's my way of writing ass. So if you ever see ass written on anything, that's me. It takes an ass to really write ass. Wow, this is good. Just to have this wall cut out, you know? <laughs> well, it's cool because when you looked at the way people put flyers, they would try to put them to not disrespect other flyers or you didn't put flyers over fly shows that didn't happen already. Look at all the people. Nobody's got masks on. Look how filthy it is. No one's dying. Nobody's afraid. Uh, you know, everybody's afraid to get shot, you know? Well, I, I guess it's kind of on that level now, too. It? Like 18 people got shot in one day the other day. 
But I mean, look at all the fucking legendary graffiti. I mean, trains, everything was tagged the fuck up. Everything was bombed. Whew. New York, though, everybody's chilling. Man. Now, it's just funny because it was so dirty then, and everyone's so afraid of it being dirty now, and it's as clean as it's ever been. You know, a lot of these people are very much into, like, you know, I remember the good old days and shit, and it's sort of like, eh, you know what? It's like, I don't look to the past too much, you know? A lot of it's a blur, and uh, it, it was, the whole thing was, like, live in the moment anyways. It, it was, you know, there's no, people didn't have their cell phones out taking pictures of it and all that. It was just like, you want to see this, you got to come down, you got to hang, you got to be part of this if you want to do it. That's it, you know, this is like a kind of a, you know, private club we had. And, uh, you know, it, it was really, you know, it was good. Be when it got bad is when it got crowded. When all of a sudden I go to a show and there's like 2,000 people there and it's like uh, fights galore and like, well, so much for that, you know. Our thing is now everyone's thing and that was it for me. I, I had enough. So, yeah, that, no, that is me, because there's my skateboard. I remember that because I had the Lonnie Topped snub nose I got from Russ. Yeah, that, that's when I used to ride skateboards all the time. Now I got bursitis. <laughs> I still ride a skateboard, though. Mark. Wow, man, it's just unbelievable. Ray, look at Ray. Ray's gone. gone. Stromboli. Junkie pizza, we called the junkie pizza because they had the sweet, the sweet sauce. The sauce is sweeter than any other any other pizzeria I know. Junkie pizza, wow. You got another book? Let's talk about more shit.